Guys, this is Mubeen. We are talking about the pulmonology pathology. We just did a disease called bronchiectasis and one of the reasons in there is cystic fibrosis. It is important for us to understand what cystic fibrosis is. So this lecture is about cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is the most common hereditary disease which causes deaths in the United States by the age of 20 or 30. It is a disease of Caucasians, 98% of the people affected by this disease are Caucasians. Very rare Asians and blacks have this disease. Asians I think it is 1 to 31,000 people and blacks 1 to 15,000. So common in whites, Caucasians. Now what is this disease? What happens is that there are on the chromosome number 7, so if this is a chromosome, chromosome number 7, there are three genes that get deleted. Three genes are deleted. These three genes that are deleted are responsible for phenylalanine. They are responsible for phenylalanine production. Now what happens is these genes are finally responsible to contribute proteins to CFTR. CFTR chloride is a CF transmembrane chloride regulator channel. What this is is that this is a protein that helps form the channels that are for chloride, sodium and water. It is a cluster of the channels. In those, the abnormality of the phenylalanine genes would cause the CFTR complex to be abnormally formed. When that is abnormally formed, as soon as it is formed, it is degraded in Golgi apparatus. Why? Why is it degraded? Because the structure of the protein is not correct, the folding is not correct. And the Golgi apparatus looks at the proteins that are not folded correctly and it kills them. So the end result is that we have defective or abnormal or missing CFTR chloride genes. When that happens, the secretions of the body become abnormal and that then causes secondary problems that can even lead to death by the year of age of 30. So quite a serious disease. So now we are, what we are going to do is, we are going to look at this disease in two sections. What happens in the sweat glands is a different kind of a problem compared to what happens in the rest of the secretory glands of the body. So let's look at what happens in the sweat. We know that the sweat when it is produced, so let's say this is a sweat gland cell, this is one more sweat gland cell. So the way the sweat is produced is we extrude the water and the sodium and chloride. Right? So these are thrown out and that becomes sweat in the gland. So that is a sweat. However, before this sweat can go out on the surface of the skin, so if this was skin surface, if this was skin here, before this fluid can go to the skin, what happens is that we reabsorb the chlorides, we reabsorb the chloride. It is going to be different over here, so please pay attention. We reabsorb sodium and we reabsorb some water. So chloride and sodium are actively reabsorbed, some water is reabsorbed as well. The result of that is that sort of hypotonic solution is formed and that solution then finally come out in the surface and that is the sweat. Cool? However, so once the chromosome has a problem and the CFTR abnormality is present, then what happens is that in these patients, the sweat glands actually do not have a normally functioning CFTR complex. The result of that is chloride is not reabsorbed, sodium is not reabsorbed. That also means that the water reabsorption is also less. And what will happen is that sweat becomes a hypertonic. Remember when sweat, as I said here, when sweat is produced, it is hypertonic. Then before it is secreted out on the skin, it becomes hypertonic because we pull the ions out. When we have a problem here with the CFTR proteins, then the, those ions cannot be pulled out. So what we will end up with is hypertonic solution. 
that is why normally it is the mother who identifies the problem in the child first of all because when she kisses the child the child is salty so she comes to the doctor and says well my child is salty when i kiss him so that is the sweat test done by a mother and, and of course when you do the sweat test on these patients they have a lots of chloride ion concentration that is actually the test so here hypertonic solution now what would that cause that would cause heat exhaustion the solution is hypertonic we are throwing out a lots of ions that would cause dehydration for the patient and lots of fluid will be lost so that is on the sweat side what about the rest of the secretion guys thank you very much for watching uh, make sure that you like subscribe and share this video like it if you like it if you don't like it then don't like it and then uh, subscribe if you want more videos we upload videos regularly so if you sub subscribe to the channel you can get a notification and the video will appear in your inbox and if you hit the uh, bell button as well then you can get the notifications for this as well